Welcome back. We need to find a way to pump the gas that McCoy just gave us into auxiliary control. We cannot do that from here. I think the best place to attempt that is probably engineering. Captain, there has been an explosion near the shuttle bay. I'm fine. There has been no significant damage. Any luck communicating with Starfleet Command? I have made contact with the light cruiser USS Jefferson, sir. It will reach the edge of Antares Rift in 16 hours. The Rift is playing havoc with communications. Thank you, Lieutenant Kirkout. That at least gives us a way to be rescued. Depending on how bad the damage to our ship is going to be. Which I'm guessing is bad. This seems pointless. This seems pointless. This is the doorway to main engineering. This panel gives emergency access to engineering for authorized personnel. Since access to engineering has not been shut down, this panel is not active. We don't need that then, I guess? Atmosphere is at 93.8%, well within safety standards. Well, that's good to know. The interior temperature is currently 24.1 degrees Celsius. A little warm for your taste. Yes, that is a little warm for my tastes. How did you know? This board is a summary of the ship's engineering status, so that Mr. Scott and the other engineers will have necessary information before they enter engineering. The hull integrity status looks dangerously low. We already knew that. The force field generator containment controls used to prevent intruders from getting to engineering. They are not functioning. I don't think that kind of thing has ever worked in the show. I don't know what these uh, conduits are. GNDN, perhaps? They have a lot of those. In case you're not familiar, that was a little in-joke from the production designers, because it stands for Goes Nowhere, Does Nothing. Um, I think we can actually talk to most people on the communicator again. Come to Scott. Come in, Scotty. Captain, the hull degradation is continuing. It's currently below 92%, but at the rate it's dropping, we have less than an hour before the ship is destroyed. I think we heard that already when we used the communication panel in the hallway. Kirk to Scott. Kirk to Uhura. Come in, Lieutenant. Captain, the rift is providing subspace interference. It's rather unusual. It's as though the interference were coming from subspace itself. I've never seen anything quite like it. If Mr. Spock were here, he'd probably find it fascinating. Keep trying to break through and report anything else that's unusual to me. Kirk out. That does sound fascinating. Kirk to Scott. Come in, Scotty. Kirk to Kirk to Sick Bay. Bones, where are you? Jim, people are beginning to interrupt me. They believe the ship's going to rupture soon, and this is the safest place. Bones, the ship is going to rupture soon, and sickbay is the safest place. And Spock's kidnapped by some aliens? I always knew that pointy-eared hobgoblin would outlive us all. I'll do my best to make them comfortable, McCoy out. Okay, I'm not quite sure if we should just assume that Spock is safe. He's been kidnapped, yes, but safely kidnapped? We don't actually know that. Alright, the engine room. Looks very different from the uh, engineering in later models of Starships. Even the refit um, Enterprise seen in Star Trek The Motion Picture for the first time. The impulse engines of the USS Enterprise. Looking at them reminds you of several times they threatened to break down. Now the engines are running fine. It's the other sections of the Enterprise that are breaking down. Okay. This seems pointless. Impulse engine fuel control systems. This system monitors fuel usage in the impulse engines. Was it ever really explained what kind of fuel the impulse engines use? Do they run off the 
matter-antimatter reaction, or do they have some separate fuel source? I'm not quite sure. This device stores special chemicals that are pumped into the ship's atmosphere when needed, and is operated by the life support system. Looks like that's the panel we will need then for our gas distribution. Artificial gravity control. This system keeps the Enterprise with both feet firmly on the ground. Correction, it keeps the people in the Enterprise with their feet on the ground. I don't think the Enterprise has feet. Deflector control grid. This system prevents the Enterprise from being pulverized at near light speed by micrometeorites. And also prone to failure um, at the drop of a hat, really. Deflector control grid. This Mr. Scott is wondering how Kirk's adventures are going to affect his poor engines this time. Life support control systems. This monitors and controls the ship's life support. We may need that as well. Think this leads into the Jeffreys tube and is sealed due to a hull breach. That's all we can look at. Other than our crew. James Kirk, captain of the Enterprise, professional crisis manager. Pavel Chekhov, a young and somewhat impetuous navigator likely to mature into a seasoned officer. Angus Walker, an experienced security officer who's seen many strange things on the Enterprise. His memoirs will be very interesting. I think that's probably true for anybody who's worked on the Enterprise and decides to write memoirs. Hikaru Sulu, capable helmsman of the Enterprise, expert physicist, and a natural leader. Certainly, he's destined to become a Starfleet captain. Hey, they're right. It's almost as if uh, this game was made after Star Trek VI. Well, here we are. The ship is literally falling apart. Space could explode randomly at any moment and destroy the Enterprise. And Spock has been kidnapped by the aliens. Aye, a typical day on the Enterprise. Sure sounds like it. Just another Tuesday. Captain, surely you must have a plan. Of course I do. I just need to find out what it is, that's all. Oh, that's very reassuring, Captain. Okay. Mr. Scott looks a bit more frazzled than usual, Captain. Well, what do you expect, man? I'm not a miracle worker. There's only so much a person can do. I think you're selling yourself short. If there's anybody who's a miracle worker, it's you. Or really any other of the engineers of any of the Star Trek shows we've seen. You know, it just wouldn't be the Enterprise without a crisis. Sometimes I wish space were a little more predictable than it is. True. Captain, is it too late to put in a request for an early retirement? Scotty, if we hit any more of these random detonations, it'll be mandatory retirement for all of us. Actually, Captain, I was hoping for a better pension. Yeah, that's not the kind of retirement anybody wants, is it? All right, let's see if we can uh, use this gas on the uh, panel over here. I wish Dr. McCoy had given me the specs on that gas injection system. It looks like a rather clumsy fit. I'll do it, Scotty. You'd think that Dr. McCoy would have some respect for engineering. You don't know McCoy very well then, do you? And then we want to use the uh, environmental controls over here to actually pump the gas into auxiliary control. Let's see how our alien friend likes Dr. McCoy's medicine. Probably as much as we do, Higaru. Mr. Kyle, can you transport me to auxiliary control? Aye, sir. But I have to remind you how dangerous intership transporting can be. We've really been pushing our luck today. I'm aware of that, Mr. Kyle, but we have to take the risk. We don't even have to walk back to the transporter room to do that. Look, something's happening. Um, he disappeared. Was that supposed to happen? Well, I guess it's um, some outcome. Maybe not the one we wanted. But at the very least, we have access to auxiliary control now. This seems pointless. This seems pointless. This station is identical to the bridge's engineering control. 
allowing access to damage control systems and emergency power and internal sensors. The dilithium crystal lattice monitor. Dilithium crystals are at 89% efficiency. This is below the optimum range, but still acceptable. Oh, well, that's good, I guess. This is the auxiliary control view screen. This station is identical to the bridge's science station, allowing access to external sensors and the library computer. Oh, no voice here. This is the ship's auxiliary navigation station. From here, the navigator can enter the ship's heading and ready the weapons in the Enterprise's fortunately few space battles. That's exactly the same description as for the actual navigation station uh, on the bridge. Except for the word auxiliary. This is the ship's auxiliary helm station. From here, the helmsman can control the ship's shields and its orbital heading. I recommend we use the auxiliary control sensor to see where the alien went. That seems like a good idea. We have to find out where that alien went. It's the only way to save Spock. I was hoping the alien would have been more communicative. Why hijack a ship that's already about to be destroyed, then kidnap a single individual, and then say nothing about why you are aboard? It certainly seemed to have the power to destroy us. Why didn't it just kill us? I don't know, gentlemen, but we'll find the answer soon, I promise. Let's hope so. You know, this mission has killed any ambitions I might have had about commanding a starship. <laughs> Alright, let's use the controls and see what we can do with them. That's odd. All systems look normal. The aliens haven't touched the helm. Weird. That's odd. All systems look normal. The aliens haven't touched navigation. What's going on? And what was he doing here? Everything seems to be working. Library, computer, external sensors. Mr. Sulu, see if you can find where the Vurian went. Maybe that will lead us to Spock. Captain, I'm detecting the Vurian. She seems to have vanished through a rift in space. I have the coordinates of her last known location. All right. Um, I'm not sure if trying to... Tr to transport to those coordinates is in any way safe. But, uh... What else can we do, right? Mr. Kyle, you have the coordinates where the alien teleported? Captain, you're asking me to transport you into another dimension. I may not be able to lock on to you there. I'm aware of the risk, Mr. Kyle. You have your orders. Aye, sir. Energize. Captain's personal log. I have transported to many strange places in my day, but beaming into an alien dimension is something entirely unique. Only the extreme risk to my ship and my friend Spock would cause me to take such a drastic risk. This doesn't look like a nice place to visit. There's the Varian. I don't see Spock. It's got to be around here somewhere. I guess so. This is another part of the game that I have strong memories of, at least of the what this place looked like with the weird black borders. Not of what I was actually supposed to do here. It is a very um, weird place. Let's see if we can find out more about it. Although it looks like common dirt, the ground in this strange place feels softer, spongier. Each footstep you take here feels... strange. Ew. Strange boulders jut from the depths of this strange planetscape. Yes, we get it. Everything's strange. Strange boulders jut... Avurian. The alien doesn't appear to be noticing you. He seems to be in pain or something. This red, gem-like stone resembles a ruby in the rough. A pile of blue stones. This blue gem looks something like a sapphire, but requires some polish and cutting. This dull yellow gemstone looks a bit like topaz. Although it looks like common... This gem-like stone has a dull orange luster. 
This bright green gemstone looks like green tinted quartz. Bunch of gemstones lying around. Maybe something similar to the um, gemstone control puzzle that we had in the previous game. Or maybe not. James T. Kirk. He has seen strange places before, but never anything like this. Ensign Chekhov. He wonders whether he's going to live long enough to reach the rank of lieutenant. That is a uh, legitimate concern, given the circumstances, I guess. Ensign Walker. He wonders why his parents had to call him Angus, of all things. Maybe they're Scottish. Lieutenant Sulu. This place is one of the most foreboding that he has ever seen. So a weird thing to wonder about uh, in this particular time. I wonder how many other universes like this one exist, connected to ours by a thread. According to Professor Tamao's theory, that would be dependent on the number of dimensions shared by the two universes. But Professor Andiango's theory would contradict this. Andiango has never proven his theory. But Tamao's theory doesn't explain slingshot effects. Gentlemen, it was a rhetorical question. Yes, we can try to debate the physics later. Let's find Spock and get out of here quickly. You aren't scared, are you? Not at all. The Russians are just inefficient and very sensible people. Sure, I'm sure that's it. Starfleet, what a career move. I really have been where no man has gone before. That is kind of the point. I hope the inhabitants of this dimension don't mind visitors. Let's hope not. Let me reach the ship. Crock to Enterprise. Come in, Enterprise. The communicators are functioning perfectly, Captain. It's as though there's nothing to talk with. All right, so no reply, but um, no malfunction either. Maybe the Enterprise is uh, just out of range because it's in a different universe. All right, let's scan, well, everything. Now this is strange. According to the Tricorder, everything around us is organic. But it feels like minerals to me. Tricorders don't lie, Pablo. It could be a deception, Captain. Okay, that was the short version of that dialogue, I guess. They seem more organic than mineral, Captain. It's a female of its race, Captain. I'm afraid my tricorder doesn't have much information on Burians. I guess that would make sense, considering they were supposed to be extinct. Captain, this stone has a cell structure. It must be organic. It also has a wave signature indicative of some sort of psionic abilities. That's strange. Captain, I am detecting a large quantity of these blue stones underneath the surface in this spot. Okay. Captain, this stone has a cell structure. It must be organic. It also has a wave signature indicative of some sort of psionic abilities. Yeah, all of the gems give the same tricorder description. I'm not sure if it's necessary to scan them all for full points, but I'm going to do it anyway. Captain, this stone has a cell... I will skip the description, though. Captain, this stone has... Captain, this stone. And we also want to use the medical tricorder on everything. The ground registers as alive, Captain. Almost like some colony life form. It registers a psionic signature. Okay. That's, uh. weird. Captain, I am getting organic readings. I can't explain this. Except to say that every particle of matter around us is organic and radiates a psionic wave signature. Incredible. Incredible. 
I guess it's incredible. No effect, Captain. I don't have enough knowledge of Vorian anatomy. Which also means that if he is in pain, which is kind of hard to tell, um, we can't help him, I don't think. Captain, this stone has a cell structure. It must be organic. It also has a wave signature, indicative of some sort of psionic abilities. I hope these stones are friendly. <laughs> I hope so too. The stones are organic, Captain. My tricorder detects intense psionic energy from them. Captain, this stone has a cell structure. I hope these stones. Yeah, again, same description. I'm still gonna scan all of them. Captain, this stone has a cell. I hope these stones. Captain, this stone. I hope these stones. Captain, this stone has a I hope these stones. Alright, let's talk to the Vurian. Greetings, Lord Kirk. I am Iminata. I regret the discomfort that I put you through on your ship. I wish only to preserve my joy by serving the Savant. Are you willing to help me, Iminata? Where is Spock? How did you come to be here? What were you doing on my ship? I think that's the most interesting question. The Savant empowered me to remove any psionically adept being from your ship, and to prevent you from following him. It was not our intention to do you harm. You actually enabled us to follow him. If you hadn't been here, uh, been on a ship at all, we would never have found out where you went, and wouldn't have been able to follow you, so... Good job! The Savant is now summoned, Lord Kirk. He awaits. Not many footsteps from here. By the fountainhead. Seek him. Are you willing to help me, Eminat? Where is Spock? How did you come to be here? Also a good question. I was a lone soldier, fleeing the massacres that followed the Three Systems War. I was heavily outnumbered. In desperation, I attempted to use my son's gravity well to propel my ship into a high warp velocity so I could escape the pursuit. I remember reading about that war in my history class at the Academy. I was warped into the Antares Sector. I traveled through a dimensional rift into this place. The Savant sustained me and gave me joy where there was once only despair. I have been here ever since. Well, that's like a hundred years. The Savant awaits. I am unimportant compared to him. Go to him at once. I will. I have no idea what the savant is, but I'm not done talking to you. You are the last of your race. That makes you very important. Physical forms are unimportant. A species is only a similarity of material form, constructed from genetic instructions. Only emotions matter. Are you willing to help me, Emanata? That's an interesting perspective. Where is Spock? Are you willing to help me, Emanata? Possibly. I am aware of your ship's distress. I can bring it to the attention of the Savant. It may help. Actually, I was thinking more about freeing Spock. I have a feeling we need to talk to the Savant about that. What is the Savant? I would appreciate the Savant being informed. Actually, I... what is the Savant? A being found that the physical form impaired his emotions, and so he discarded it as a Lord discards his raiment. An entity of great benevolence and joy. Through my psionic talents, we are linked in ecstasy eternal. Where is this savant? Everywhere. When one is an entity, one transcends the limitations of space, time, and dimension. But the savant prefers to center its thoughts at the fountainhead, which is quite close. Okay, I guess we need to find out where that is so we can talk to this savant. The savant awaits. I am unimportant compared to him. Go to him at once. I will. You are the last. Can you talk about the savant? Give us a chance to know what to expect. That would be quite useful. Nothing I can say will truly prepare you for what awaits. Are you willing to help me, Emanata? <laughs> say this again. Possibly. I am aware of your ship's distress. I can bring it to the attention of the savant. It may help. Actually, I was thinking more. What is the I would appreciate the savant being informed. It is done. The savant awaits. 
Uh, before we go looking for the savant and Spock, obviously, let's pick up these stones. We may need them. I heard that, Mr. Sulu. I didn't say anything. You've always been saying things behind my back. You've always said I don't have enough discipline, that I don't respect my crew. You're insubordinate, Mr. Sulu. Get hold of yourself, Captain. What earth was I saying? I'm sorry, Mr. Sulu, that was not... Captain, I think we better get out of here as soon as possible. Interesting. It seems these stones have some effect on people who pick them up. It almost seems like paranoia or something. I'll get them, Captain. Wait, we need something to handle them with. Mr. Walker, handling single stones produced intense emotions. A cache of these stones. You're right, sir. Alright, so we can't pick up the blue ones. This place reminds me of Deneva. I lost my brother there. He was a few years younger than I was, and there were times when he annoyed me. Captain? And now he's gone. Gone. I'll never see him again, never tell him... Tell... To, to tell him... Captain, snap out of it. This place must be getting to me. I think it's the stones more than the place. Don't worry, Mr. Walker, I'll protect you. Sir? Sulu, check on. You know, I may never have told you this before, but I care for you all more than I can tell. Sulu, with your dedication, your unwavering sense of responsibility... Captain, are you talking about me? Cheko, I've always been impressed by your enthusiasm. All those wonderful Russian jokes, your humanity... Captain? And you, Mr. Walker, with your rugged determination, I'll bet you had more girlfriends than anyone in the history of the Academy. Actually, sir, I'm... celibate. What... What was I just saying? Okay, don't wind on a tangent. Why are you reaching for your phaser, Mr. Sulu? Captain. Walker, I saw you sneaking up on me. Sir. You're all against me. You've gotten rid of Spock, now me. Who's next, Scotty, Uhura? Or are they part of this too? Captain, snap out of it. Something is definitely wrong, such intense emotions. Weird. What are we doing here? Why did we come here? Captain? There's no way back. We'll never find Spock. We're trapped here forever, and it's all my fault. I knew the Antares Rift was dangerous. I should never have let the ship go in there. Captain, what? Let's find Spock. That sounds like a good idea. We now have all these gems with us. Except for these blue ones. Where we cannot pick up uh, more of them. Because it would be ta too dangerous to handle that many. Anyway, let's see if we can find the Savant, as well as Spock. I wonder if anybody else is here, besides them and the Virion. I am the Savant. I wish you and all entities nothing but joy. Who are you? I think we found the Savant. Kind of reminds me of God from Star Trek V, which is... Not a good association to make. Why do you ensnare others against their will? Release Spock at once and allow us to return to our ship. Who are you? Let's just start with the obvious question, I guess. Once, eons ago, I was akin to you. A creature of flesh and pain. But I released myself from these bonds and became an entity of pure emotion. And I came to this place to find a shelter from the cares of the universe. Interesting. Although it looks like common dirt, the ground in this strange place feels softer, spongier. Each footstep you take here feels... strange. The remains of a Vurian life support capsule. I guess that's how the Vurian got here. The remains of a Vurian life support capsule. 
Strange boulders jut from the depths of this strange planetscape. There's something weird here. A pouch from the Vurian life support capsule. The remains of a Vurian life support capsule. The Savant. James Kirk, captain of the Enterprise. Hikaru Sulu, the trusty helmsman of the Enterprise. Pavel Chekhov, the faithful navigator of the Enterprise. Angus Walker, sturdy security officer of the Enterprise. Not the only one. Suggestions on how to get Spock and get out of here. Not a clue. Sorry, Captain. Ditto. Helpful. We need to find a weakness in whatever kidnapped Spock. I'm afraid I'm all out of ideas. Maybe if we analyze everything, we might think of something. Why do I have the feeling that a phaser isn't going to solve our problems this time? That does seem like it. But we'll see how to deal with this savant in the next video.